Keith Bolson, I don't, how many of you have had ever heard of or met Keith Bolson before? Fred has, you have, Gail has. Yeah, uh, this morning you learned about him, yeah. <laughs> so Keith Bolson had passed, he passed away a couple of years ago, but he was really our mentor when it came to creating drive over piles, uh, saving money on, on, on sh shrink losses, uh, but his true passion was silage safety. And when he stopped working with the Silo Stop Company, um, he he said, I don't know what I'm going to do. And if you knew Keith, he was a real worrier. He just worried about the stuff like that. And I know he's watching us <laughs> today. Um, but I said, Keith, start a Silage Safety Foundation. Do that. And that's your real passion. You love that stuff. So he did. And um, so that's what he would do in his retirement is work with safety. And I'm sure that if he were alive today, he would be standing right here doing this safety meeting with you because he was the, 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 he was a global person uh, recognized for that. Um, he was a prof professor at Kansas State, uh, had several graduate students that worked under him, and, and he, was a very, he was a real joy to work with and a very practical professor. Um, so that's, this is all comes from Keith. So I have to really recognize <laughs> Keith as, as, a, as a great person in our lives and for Ron and I. So let's get started. <clears throat> so... Uh, Let's open to your books <laughs> and we'll talk about safety is a control of a recognized hazard and that hazard can affect m me, it can affect you, it, if, if you're the, uh, the feeder or whoever you are, the things you do affect everybody on the dairy. Um, and accidents are created by unsafe behavior. And, and it, that's just, accidents happen, we all know that, but there's a lot we can do to not have accidents. So we wanna teach everybody about silage safety. And when we talk about little kids, this is the first page we open up to. Our uh, uh, silage it pile is a, is a monster. We have stories about kids. I mean, look at this cool, this is, uh, he does a great job with his, he's got a, a cement base here. Uh, it's a super place to ride a bike, you know, because on a dairy, there's not a lot of places to ride a bike that's nice, flat, smooth, or a skateboard, or any of that kind of stuff. But that's why we put that page first, is that that silage face is a monster. And something you can see here, come step over here with me. So I tried to use caution tape, but that blew over because you got too much wind today. So we teach, we teach the safety cone method. And we learned this from a dairy up in northern Minnesota. So what they do is we figure out, we, we want to stay three times the height of the pile. And Terry and I talked about it. He, it's about 18 to 20 feet high, OK? So times three is 54 to 60, correct? OK. So to avoid an avalanche, stay three times the uh, height of the pile away. And that is pretty much what this is. So I would, I would never walk up there. I just won't. I won't do it anymore. I've heard of too many people being hurt or killed in silage avalanches. I've got a really good friend, Doug DeGroff, who is a, t a nutritionist in Tulare that we work with quite often. And he's been, he was in a silage accident. He was, it was a 12 foot pile. He was raking it down with his fork. He went to get the, uh, the sample and the pile came down on him. And it looked like this. I mean, it was packed really well. Everything was great, but it, it came down on him. He had the presence of mind to go, to go like this and was able to, uh, cause he was totally buried and he made himself uh, an airway and, and somebody come and came and forked him out. He got in his truck and he drove to the hospital, called his wife on the way. And it ended up that he broke his back in several places. He had several broken ribs. Um, you know, his neck was bad. Uh, his lung, one of his lungs was, was crushed. And um, how he got to the hospital, we don't know, but he did. Um, and he went home after a few weeks in the hospital and the real tragedy was that two weeks later, he went back to the hospital with a clot in his lung. 
And that's what really almost killed him. So it's not just the, the avalanche itself, but it's all the trauma that comes with it. So we teach people to, to have your feeder put cones out like this. Now, is your feeder going to stay away from that in the equipment? Of course not. They're going to go up and break. They're going to do their job, do all that kind of thing. But when they take three feet off, they're going to take all the cones and they're going to go like that because it's, that's the distance. And the thing is, you can put up signs all day long, but when we see signs, after about three weeks, maybe a month, we don't see those signs anymore. It just blows right by you. So the, the idea that the feeder moves these cones puts in his or her mind that I'm going to stay away from there. And it, when people are on the farm working or visiting, it reminds them that, oh, that, it's not in the same place anymore. It's someplace else. And it, it's just a refreshing uh, system for your, for the, to, to stay away from that face. So anyway, I think everybody... Everybody gets that. Um, so keep your distance. Okay, we'll turn the page. And we go to making drive over piles. And Keith was big on this. Uh, safe, safety and efficiency go hand in hand. If, you're, if you build efficient piles that are well packed, this one looks like it's very well packed. It's, a, it's got a nice shape to it. Um, you could drive any way off the pile. When you make a safe or, or efficient pile, it's going to be safe as well. Uh, and, and build it only as high as the unloader can reach. And it looks like he's, he's just about right there. That's, that's a great job. He used a rake to, to face this. Uh, less chance of an avalanche. You have better fermentation. You don't have to pitch so much. And a less of a chance of falls when you're uncovering that film. Okay, uh, something that's not in the book, which we should have put in there, but we didn't, is silo gas. Has anybody ever seen orange silo gas? Okay, um, it's, a not, it's nitrogen oxide. It comes off the, the silage when you first make it, and it, it's, it's deadly. If, 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 I, I don't think I have to repeat this, but it's, it's stay away from it. We had a guy that made a pile out in California, and... Uh, he, he made it next to the heifer pen, and the, in the morning when he got up, the heifers were all in one corner of the pen, and they would not come up to eat because there, there it was. There it was. So anyway, that, that also we know it occurs in tower silos as well. So, uh, okay, stay safe when sampling. So do you sample your own or does... Uh, yeah, Gary samples it. Gary samples it. Okay, so to stay safe when you're sampling... Um, Go up, and, and we, of course, suggest that you sample the whole face because you're going to feed the whole face. So why would you sample that part that came out of that one field, but there's another part way on the other side that came from another field, that kind of thing. So get a, get a representative sample, take it to the side, uh, take, take several samples from all over there, and, and then make one sample out of that. Um, and... Uh, and, and that way you get an even sample and you're not standing next to, the, next to the pile grabbing it out of there with your hand because you're not supposed to be there, right? Right. Are there any questions about that at all? Okay, let's turn the page. Oh, the other thing about that picture is don't stand in the bucket next to the, don't, just don't go there. Just don't do anything. It's, it's not necessary. All right, sample away from the side of the face. We talked about that. Uh, don't undercut the pile. Yes? Five, six minutes. Oh, okay. All right. Uh, don't undercut the pile. He's doing a nice job um, uh, with, with not undercutting. You see people that don't have a rake or don't have a defacer, and they'll go up, somebody will go up with, at the bottom of the pile and ram it in there and get a bucket load out. Don't do that because it, you just undercut and and create problems for yourself, possible avalanche. I've seen uh, in Colorado, we have a dairy that uses our film that uh, will face, and if it's, if it's this, they'll try to face it this way, you know what I mean? Uh, not, not this way, but that way, so that the face is kind of angular there, not quite to that extent, about like that, and, uh, and that helps too. Okay, moving on. 
uh, use a rake. We talked about that and slanting the face. Then uh, the next page, pitching spoiled feed is dangerous. Um, there, I got a great picture of a guy standing on a California dairy, uh, pitching that much stuff off of a silage pile, and he's standing like right there is the edge. Oh my gosh, scary, scary. Um, so in the first place, make a good pile. Then you don't have to pitch. Cover it with a good film, and then you don't have to pitch. So that's, um, that's the message there is, is to do that. Wear good boots when you're up there trying to take film off so you don't slip. Um, and there are some farms that use a safety harness if you really want to get there. And uh, what they do is they'll take a strap and pull it across or some kind of a tether with a harness. That way, if somebody does fall, you can reel them in. So uh, there we go. Pitching food uh, is dangerous. We're almost done. Conduct safety meetings on your farm. Even if it's just you and your brother or your wife or your sister or your kids or whatever, make it a priority that safety is important and have the safety meeting. Use one of these. Um, you've seen it doesn't take long to do one of these things. Um, but let everybody know how important safety is. Safety is never important until it's important to you. And so just make it a priority. Wear safety clothing. I have, you know, I've got a vest for everybody today. If you'd like more vests, I brought a whole bunch of them. Take some home with you. Um, and and you can, it, we suggest that you supply three or four for your employees. Don't let them take them home. Have them all, hang them on a hook on, in the shed. And that way uh, they, they're there. They don't go home and get lost. Uh, and if they don't like vests, there's tons of different safety clothing that you can wear. Okay, so, uh, so I guess my big message is use this safety cone method because it, it really does work. It really works. And uh, post safety signs if, you, if you'd like, but the, the cone really works good. And all these words I've used are in your handy word search. So when you're really bored this winter and it's, you know, snow and blizzarding outside, now you've got something to do. Um, yes? Yes, I have it available in Spanish, and I've got a couple of copies that you're welcome to take with you. We have sent over 40,000 of these things out to kids, uh, to 4-H extension, uh, FFA groups, all kinds of different people. So uh, my web address is, is ConnorAgranScience.com. Uh, it's on the back. If you know somebody that would like to use them, or if you'd like to use them yourselves, please do. Just send me a, a message on the contact. So. Thank you for listening. I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. You're welcome.